Welcome to the season one final of Upgrade My PC, please. We made it. On last week's episode, we had five randomly selected computers, all in need of various upgrades, and you, the viewers, voted Joshua's Core 2 Quad Rig the most worthy of receiving the proposed upgrades. So coming his way is a Ryzen 7 1700 processor, an ASUS ROG Strix B350 motherboard, and 8GB of DDR4 memory. And as always, for you viewers, don't forget to vote and comment each week because that will place you in the running to win some cool prizes. And again, those are global giveaways. For example, last week's winner was from India and they took home a very cool AOC gaming monitor. This week's winner will be announced at the end of the video, so stick around for that. But before then, we have five random PCs to check out and they will be the last five PCs of season one. First up, we have a converted pre-built from Nicholas. Uh, originally, this was a HP MV system, but over time he's upgraded everything except for that terrible OEM case. And therefore he says the next thing that he wants to tackle is the case. Uh, apparently the airflow in that HP MV case is very poor. Right now, Nicholas is playing games such as Battlegrounds, GTA 5, and Borderlands, but he would also like to start playing newer AAA titles such as Destiny 2, for example. He also notes that ideally he would like any of the upgrades to stick with his current black, silver, and red theme, but he acknowledges that beggars can't necessarily be choosers. Well, mate, I do appreciate your passion, and I like your attention to detail, so I'll do my best to stay on theme. Looking over the system specs, this is a tricky one uh, to say the least because there are quite a few components here that do need upgrading. In fact, pretty much everything with the exception of the power supply and of course the monitor. I would also like to squeeze an SSD into the budget and of course replace that sad excuse for a computer case. While not exactly the bee's knees, a quad-core Haswell CPU is still pretty sprightly, so let's stick with the Core i5-4430 for now. A big contributing factor to that decision, of course, is the 16GB of DDR3 memory, and it would be a real shame to ditch that. So this is how I propose we go about things. I think it's safe to say that the GeForce GTX 760 is the weakest link by far in this system, and replacing that with a newer graphics card is really a must. So the GeForce GTX 1060, uh, that's going to really take the gaming experience to the next level. Then to load up all of Nicholas's games in record time, we have the Crucial MX300, a 525GB model no less. Replacing the HP case is the exceptionally good value Cooler Master Masterbox Lite 3.1. And because we can, let's ditch that ugly stock looking cooler with the Deep Cool Gamax 400, a compact style cooler that will fit nicely inside the master box and it will also have a little bit of room to spare. Should Nicholas win, he will have a very nice setup that will get him by for now and then in the future when he upgrades the platform, he'll be ready to take full advantage. Hopping over to Canada, we have Ryan's ominous sounding Nuclear Doom. It's an AMD FX based rig, so I get it. And right away you can tell Ryan, he kind of loves his AMD hardware. That Thermaltake V3 AMD edition case really is something else. It's a shame the Core i5-8400 isn't in stock. That and the GeForce GTX 1060 would be perfect for this build. Okay, enough messing around. Business time. Now, this PC was built about a year ago, which may surprise a few of you, and it was uh, built after a nine-year stint with an old Phenom 2 system. Now, Wright admits that he wasn't aware that Ryzen was about to be released at the time of building this system. Apparently, you can't get internet under a rock. Seriously, though, mate, by late 2015, the word Zen was added at least once every 60 seconds by tech enthusiasts around the world. Anyway, the PC is used for gaming and streaming. Right now, Ryan's playing Wolfenstein New Order, uh, Doom 4, and World of Warcraft. Now, we could sit here all day and discuss why Ryan bought an FX8370 in 2016, but let's just give him a pass on that one. He came here for some upgrade help, so let's try and give him some. First pro tip, though, run an FX series CPU in dual-channel memory mode. Single-channel starves an already starved CPU. But again, I guess that's not why he came here, not for that advice anyway. So okay, let's just get to the upgrade stuff. The Radeon RX 480 is obviously still very capable. That FX CPU though, well, let's just quietly replace that with a Ryzen 5 1600. 
At this point, Ryan's probably heard enough and he's already polishing that AMD logo on the front of his case. The CPU will find itself right at home on Gigabyte's AB350 gaming motherboard with 8 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. Now, if Ryan finds it necessary, he can add an additional 8 gigabytes of memory in the future, but other than that, he should be pretty right for some time to come if he's lucky enough to win. Now, this next PC entered by Charles is actually his fiance's PC. She uses it for gaming, streaming, and creating videos. The game of choice right now is Overwatch. Uh, it sounds like Charles and his fiance uh, play a lot of Overwatch, and I can certainly understand that. It's a very addictive game. If only I had time to play. Anyway, the PC has been scavenged together using whatever spare parts they could get their hands on. Not that long ago, this PC was lagging even more than it does now with an FX4130 processor, but that was recently upgraded to the FX8320 when Charles upgraded his own rig to Ryzen. So the aim here is to achieve smoother gameplay, particularly when streaming, and because she does do quite a bit of video editing on the side, a more powerful CPU for encoding is a must. Another issue with the current system is the power supply. It's a custom Alienware unit which doesn't meet the standard ATX specification, therefore doesn't fit correctly in the deep cool Tesseract case. So ideally they'd like to change it. The system also lacks an SSD and that's something I personally feel is a must for every system. So we do have quite a few things that we need to try and address here. That being the case, I'll have to be a little bit more creative with our budget than usual. The R5 1600 would be my typical go-to choice for such a system, gaming and streaming, but it's not really going to fit in our $500 US budget with all the other things that I want to get. So we'll have to compromise there and go for the Ryzen 5 1400 instead, and we'll slot that again onto the Gigabyte AB350 gaming motherboard with 8 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. Then to speed up load times and the overall snappiness of the system, let's migrate the OS to the crucial BX300 120GB SSD. Oh, and to make it a lot less hacked together, we'll go with the Thermaltake Smart 600W power supply to replace that oversized Alienware thing that's just sitting in the bottom of the case right now. Should they be lucky enough to win in the future when Charles and his fiance have a little bit more money to play with, uh, they could upgrade the graphics card and maybe add a little more memory and perhaps even go crazy with the CPU when Ryzen Plus arrives next year. Now we're back over to the US for a little Vegemite. Hmm, that was unexpected. Didn't expect to see Vegemite next to a computer in one of these. But anyway, <laughs> Australian spreads aside. We have a rather smart looking PC built by JC here and it was built back in 2014 for less than $500 US, which happens to be our budget today. JC admits though that his priorities were a little off on this one as he spent most of the money on the case. But after seeing the end case M1 version four, he just had to have it. So it's fair to say any upgrade plans that we make now will be based around this case. Although the system is pretty basic with an AMD A107850K APU and the Radeon HD6870 graphics card, JC's not really asking that much of it at the moment as he really only plays Super Smash Bros. Melee on netplay via the Dolphin emulator. That said, he is planning on upgrading for next year to play Monster Hunter World, uh, which will no doubt be a bit too much for the APU and 6000 series GPU. So for this upgrade, I'm again going to go with the Ryzen 5 1400 because we also need to replace the graphics card and that will only fit in our budget. Uh, the real tough choice here though for me was what motherboard we go with because we are limited to an AM4 Mini ITX motherboard and there really aren't that many of those around and pretty much all of them are priced over $100 US which kind of blows out our budget a bit. So... Yeah, I, there is a Biostar board for $85 US, which looks to be an exceptionally good value buy, but I've never really recommended a Biostar product before, and I was a bit hesitant to touch this one. After a bit of research, it seems to have received pretty solid reviews from professional reviewers, and the user feedback's also been very positive. Since it will work within our budget, and my hands are pretty much tied anyway because we can't afford anything else, I'm going to bite the bullet and recommend the Biostar X370 GTN. It's pretty much our only choice, so let's go with it. And yeah, I've got no reason to doubt it at this point. Uh, the only problem with a Mini ITX board, and we'll face this problem with any Mini ITX board, is that if JC wants to expand the memory down, or in the future, he will have to dump the 8GB kit that we've purchased with this upgrade package and then buy a pair of 8GB sticks for a 16GB capacity. 
But that is the limitation of the Mini ITX form factor, as I said, and there's no getting around that. Then handling the 3D rendering work, which I suppose is the gaming, will be the GeForce GTX 1050 Ti, which should be a nice upgrade from the old Radeon HD 6850. Should JC win, he'll be receiving a huge upgrade from what he currently has, and should be well primed to take on Monster Hunter World next year. Last up, we have Andrew's ROG Beast, and right away, it has to be said that this system is already quite good. But we don't discriminate against those who have made wise purchases in the past or are passionate about the components they use. All systems are welcome, and as I've said, photos are key, guys. 100% key to getting picked, so be aware of that for Season 2. I'll talk about this a bit more in a video soon. Anyway, focusing on Andrew's rig, it is an Ivy Bridge based Core i5 3570K and when overclocked the CPU still offers a decent experience despite being limited to just 4 cores and 4 threads. Still ditching it for something like the Ryzen 5 1400 wouldn't really be that much of an upgrade and it certainly wouldn't justify getting rid of 16GB worth of DDR3 memory. Not with today's prices anyway. The ASUS Strix GeForce GTX 1060 6GB is also a very good graphics card, but next year Andrew wants to start gaming at 1440p, so he is eyeing off a GPU upgrade. He also wants to get rid of that old Silverstone power supply if possible. Now, if you guys haven't guessed, Andrew is a massive ROG Strix fan, and he really wants to stick with ASUS hardware for any upgrades. So we're pretty limited here, but he really wants it, so I'm going to suggest the ASUS ROG Strix GTX 1070 Gaming 8G, and well, that will eat up pretty much our entire budget. There really isn't even enough room left over to upgrade that power supply. Having said that though, the GTX 1070 and Core i5 combo, that won't come anywhere near 400 watts, so the power supply shouldn't be an issue. Just finally, before wrapping this up, if this were my own system, I'd really be keen to get rid of the Core i5-3570K and replace that with a second-hand Core i7-3770K. That would pretty much be the best option here, providing you can get one for the right price. Alright guys, there's five different PCs, all in need of various upgrades. It's now your job to let us know which one you think is the most deserving of receiving our proposed upgrade package by voting. To cast your vote, please follow the link in the video description and that'll head you over to the TechSpot forums. By signing up for the forums, commenting and voting, you'll go on the running to win some very cool prizes. And again, those are global giveaways for the viewers. Speaking of which, the winner from last week's episode was Rekua227. Congratulations, mate. You have a Ryzen 5 1500X processor coming your way from AMD. Big thank you to AMD for providing that amazing prize and for supporting the whole first season of Upgrade My PC, please. There's been plenty of Ryzen CPUs given away. So again, thank you, AMD Australia. Really appreciate the support. And just finally, voting will be open until Friday night in the US, and that'll be Saturday afternoon here in Australia. And well, that concludes the first season of Upgrade My PC, please. In next week's video, I'll just be announcing the winner for this final episode, as well as the winner for voting and commenting. So yeah, make sure you go do that right now. Hope you guys enjoyed this first season of Upgrade My PC, please. I'm your host, Steve. Again, go get voting. <laughs>